Hello fellow developers. It's been a while since I made a tutorial of some kind. I've been busy. But today I bring you something special. Negative lights. Before I set up two examples, keep in mind that it's quite janky, results may vary, and I cannot guarantee that it will work when cooking the game, or even during simulations mode. Well, with that out of the way, here goes. This is actually Unreal Engine 5 and Lumen, so as you can see it works in Lumen. But for the rest of the video I'm mainly going to use Unreal Engine 4 because I'm still more accustomed to that engine and therefore my workflow will be faster. So this is Unreal Engine 4 and as you can see I have some negative lights going on over here. Another one over here. And two colored ones over here. So let's set up the first one. Okay. I'm going to have an empty scene-ish thing. I'm going to place down a light. First, I'm going to show Will Chambers' version. Will Chambers showed this yesterday, and we were all trying to figure out how it worked, and he said it was so easy, and he kept giggling because we couldn't find out. Eventually, after quite some convincing, and maybe some slight threats, fun threats, yeah, he explained what you have to do. And all you have to do is select the light, scroll down a little. Actually, I'm going to make it... A bit better visible for you people. I'm going to go to the widget reflector and set the application scale to 1.25. .25. Okay, and selected the light. I'm going to scroll down to shadow filter sharpen and we're going to put in a negative value. And that's it. That's basically it. Now, there's one thing though in Lumen that might not work. I'm going to place down a light. I'm going to scroll down to Shadow Filter Sharpen, do minus one, and as you can see, there is no negative light. So this version does not work in Unreal Engine 5. At least it might be, but I couldn't figure out the settings for it. Back to Unreal Engine 4. Now let's show the version that I came up with, which was a little bit accidental, but it's, thanks Will Chambers for actually pushing the other version because we really wanted to figure it out. And I found another way to do this. And this actually works in Unreal Engine 5, but it's way more finicky. So I'm gonna scroll down and there's something called IES texture. You can get them on the marketplace, you can get them when Googling, but the best way to grab some is through ieslibrary.com. If you search for 360, you actually find one that I used. Uh, let me refresh because it doesn't want to work. Search 360 there, and then I only need to scroll down about two times. I grabbed one of these two, which are nice and spherical for in this case. You can try other ones if you want to, because there are over 300,000 IES profiles on this website. I imported them, and I'm just going to place one in here, in the IES texture of this lighting I selected. Now, nothing changed until I set the IES intensity to minus one. It's way more erratic than the one that Will made, but it does have some cool things going on, as you can see. You can also make it a little bit sharper by increasing that value, or actually decreasing that value to minus 100 or something. And then you can play around a little bit with some of the other settings. And one of them is the source length. If I go all the way up, as you can see, it's actually not as intense anymore. It's still a little bit Legally, uh, we can try and change that a little bit by changing the values. If the actually the brightness value is all the way up, you get this weird result. If you go down a little bit, it looks a little bit better. Sometimes it resets itself, as you can see, which is quite annoying. It's something you have to live with. So setting it to about 0.01 seems to work. And then go up a little bit again. Mm. Maybe we have some other light. That's actually another thing with this. Let me go up a little bit more. If I go to blue, because I inverted the IS color, it's yellow. If I go to red, it's more the turquoise. So that's definitely something you need to take care of. I'm gonna put this down a little bit until we get something like this. Maybe we can change something else as well. We can try a maturation, but it looks fine. Source radius, as you can see, is way more intense. And if I lower this value, that should disappear again a little bit. So play around with those values. And the closer you get to here, there. 
this seems to be about right. It's like, uh, okay. This time there's some glowy light in the previous recording. That wasn't the case. And if I move around, it works. Oddly enough, I also set up the same light here and it doesn't seem to have that issue as much. So every time it changes a little bit, that makes it a little bit figgly. But yeah, it kind of works. I'm going to slowly slow, uh, scroll down a little bit so you can see the settings. Maybe I can even compare them. So let's see what changed just in case. There, that wasn't the value. The source length, that might be a thing actually because it's super high in this one. Mm, didn't change. I'm not sure if there's anything else I changed. You can go down. Maybe it was the uh, IS thing itself. Let's do minus 10. That was the value. Apologies for this, but I'm still figuring it out as well. Now, as you can see, this works and you can do all kinds of colors. You can combine them. And as a buddy Pado pointed out, you could in theory get the RGB value. So I'm going to do red, blue, and for fancy, so I'm going to add another one over here, which should be the green. So I need to go to opposite there. And now we have RGB going on. And it's somewhat subtractive, which is actually kind of cool. So you can definitely also do cool things with that. Uh, what else can I tell you? Let's do a UE5. I already set one up one of these lights, so it's the same process. But I'm going to show you anyway. I'm going to hold down L, left mouse click, and I'm going to get a light. I already imported the IES profile, so I'm going to select one. And in the light, I scroll down until I get IES profile. There, IES texture. I'm going to put it in and then give it a negative value. As you can see, it's quite intense with Lumen. But again, you'll have to change some values. And it's a little bit of a get go source radius, might change it a little bit. Let's move it a little bit over here. Uh, let's see, source length, no, which one is it this time? Let's change the light color a little bit. That should be it, let's see. Is it costing inverted shadows? It seems to be, but maybe this one's overriding it, getting in the way. Yeah, as you can see, it's still inverting shadows. So, that works. Play around with the values, tweak it, let me know if you get it working any better. Um, maybe one other thing, because why not? Uh, I actually made a blueprint version. I put the same light into a blueprint, and it actually works in Pi. I, at least that's something. I'm going to fill those lights real quick. And put down this one. I'm going to scroll down again and put in the IS profile, which for some reason seems to go away. Maybe I didn't save it properly last time. And now if I simulate... Oh, did it move over here? It moved over here, actually. So, let's grab it real quick. Some error in my blueprint. I'm not a blueprint person. There. And as you can see, in Pi, it at least works. It's moving now. It's doing its thing. It has negative shadows. I think that's it. I'll put the IES link in the description. The project lighting and stuff, you probably have to do yourself because it's figgly and that way you get used to it. I think that's actually it. Take care. Have a nice day. Have a great week and an awesome year. Take care.